Hey, greetings, everybody. Uh, today, I want to talk about voiceover channel strips. So right now, what you're hearing is my Audix OM2 going through a PreSonus Studio channel. This is my standard setup for doing uh, any kind of voiceover work that I would do. Today, what I want to do is take, instead of a $100 mic through a $300 preamp, I want to see if I can take this $25 AKG 9000 straight into my interface and see if I can get this kind of sound from this mic. Stick with me. All right, we're back in Ableton now. Uh, what I've got going here, like I said, is I've got my outboard channel here. This is my standard uh, voiceover channel. And as you can see, click in here, there's nothing on it. So this is uh, the Persona Studio channel with an Audix OM2 uh, straight, no uh, effects applied on the computer. And I think it sounds really good. I like this sound. This is a good sound. Uh, the Persona S Studio channel uh, just has tube drive on the preamp. It also has a compressor and a three-band EQ. Uh, it's a pretty simple but good-sounding uh, affordable channel strip, and I, I tend to like it. So let's see what we can do again now uh, with this channel strip, which is direct, as you can see here, direct in using an AKG D9000. Now used right now, it looks like you can get these mics for about $25. Now when they were new, uh, I had two of them just given to me, I don't know, even probably eight to 10 years ago. And even back then, uh, when you could buy them, because you can't buy these new anymore, uh, I think you could get two of them for something like 60 to $75. They came as a pack. So even back then, they were 25 to $35 a piece. Um, not an expensive mic. But let's see if we can get a better sound more similar to this from an inexpensive mic straight into the interface. So what are we going to do? Well, the things, the components that I like about the uh, Personas Studio channel is that it has some tubes. So I put in a dynamic tube here. It's got an EQ and it's got the uh, compressor. Now the compressor that is built in uh, to my channel strip is a bit slower it's not as precise, so I ended up using the glue compressor from Ableton to see if we can emulate this. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to punch these in one at a time, and then we'll compare them, and then I'll talk about uh, why I chose what I did and uh, how, it, how it sounds and what we can get from it. All right, so back to this one. So uh, as I turn on uh, some of these uh, components here, and I'm going to put a, a download to this whole channel strip here as well uh, in the description below. So check that out. So this is the sound that I tend to like. This is the sound that I tend to like. You can hear that they're pretty different. Um, so let's just start building it. One of the biggest differences is obviously EQ. So let's just start with some EQ on the... Um, AKG mic here. So now you can already tell by just engaging this, looking at these points, that that sounds more similar for sure. More similar, not exact. The mics have different frequency spectrums too, but we've definitely gotten it more in the ballpark without making it sound unnatural. Uh, so EQ is the first thing that we'd want to tackle. We'd want to take and we'd want to say, okay, uh, on the PreSonus, I only have three channels. I did it in four on this one. Did it in four. Sorry, I shouldn't have turned that up so loud. Uh, four bands here. But essentially, I'm going to say, okay, what are some of the uh, problem frequencies with this mic? And then let's just, just kind of tuck those out a little bit. Check, hey, hey. Check, hey, hey. Check, hey, hey. So it could take a little more low there. And I'm actually using a shelf that has a bit of a resonance to it to uh, cut my lows and boost the highs a little bit there. 
<laughs> cut the lows and then boost at the high end of this uh, resonance there. So check hey hey, check hey hey. Yeah, great. So we're getting there. We're getting there. EQ is half the battle. So as you can see, the moves that I made were a low shelf with resonance that uh, when you crank down the low lows, gives you a bit of a bump here. Second move I made was a really wide scoop uh, down in the low mids, and it scoops all the way up into here. If I turn off number six here, you can kind of see, ah, six isn't even really doing all that much. Uh, actually, no, six is not doing anything per se. So we're going to leave it out. We're going to say three moves, just like on the Personas. So this is just a nice wide scoop out of the low mids, leaving some lows. And then uh, the last move is boosting the highs there with just a standard shelf. All these are just stock Ableton plugins, and they work great. So the next step is, again, I like the studio channel from Personas because it has a bit of tube drive. So again, this is the sound of the Personas with the Audix OM2. This is the sound we've gotten so far with the AKG D9000 straight into the interface. So let's turn on the tube drive. Check hey, hey. And now you can just tell things just sound better. I've got the dry wet set to about 70%. Just cranking the drive here. 15 dB of drive. Tone, I've got rolled way back. I'm using tube uh, curve. The, the curve of it is B. And these are just different um, ways that it will distort, simulating different types of tubes, essentially. Bias I've got cranked way down, and then not using the envelope at all. So that's kind of the settings that I get. Check hey, hey. This is the sound of the AKG D9000. This is the sound of the Audix OM2. So we're, we're getting close. We're getting, we're getting there. We're not there yet. But the final and one of the more important ones, along with EQ, uh, the least important is the dynamic tube. But the two most important would definitely be the EQ and the compression. So now with compression enabled, I like to put my compression uh, after my EQ. And actually, it seems a little bit loud here. So let's bring this up. There we go. I like to put it this way just so that the cuts that I'm making in the low end are not affecting the uh, compression itself. So let's talk about what I've got here for the uh, compressor compressor setup. Uh, attack is right up the middle, about one millisecond or so. Release is as fast as it'll go, and then the ratio is at four. Threshold is all going to depend on what you have coming in from your interface. I shot, if I turn this off, you can see that uh, being right on top of the mic, I'm shooting for peaks not hitting negative 12, and my RMS, I don't know, somewhere in negative 20, somewhere right around there. That's what I was shooting for with this. Now again, turning this channel strip back on, um, the compression threshold is gonna depend on how hard you're driving the input of your uh, interface. I don't tend to drive them too hard because I like to have lots of headroom, which is good. So again, now we're listening to this. Let's compare back and forth. So the entire channel strip is in now. Three plugins, all stock from Ableton, uh, compared to the Audix OM2 versus the AKG D9000. Outboard equipment, built-in plugins. Now, you can tell that they are different. They're not the same. Yeah, there's a lot of pieces of this that are just going to be... You can't make them the same. It's a different mic using different uh, components to shape its sound. Now, we can get things close. This is pretty close. This is passable for sure. There's a few things it sounds like to me. It sounds like I might want to bring this down a little bit more. Maybe bring that six back in and... Ch -ch 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 -ch. Find that. You bring the, bring that out a little bit. So again, just giving a little bit of a 2 dB cut. Is that closer? Is that closer? Sounds like it is. So essentially, I'm going back and forth, just kind of a being. Yeah, so now we're getting closer. So you just kind of go through and find 
the things that work for you. Now, will this EQ curve work for everybody? No, because this is my mic, my voice into my interface. Uh, but this gives you the idea of how I do it, right? So I think this sounds pretty good. I still prefer this sound, but we're, we're pretty close here. I think I've scooped a little bit too much mids right there. Check, hey, hey, check, hey, hey. Pretty close, definitely passable. So that just goes to show you, even with a $25 mic straight into an interface uh, with stock plugins, you can get a great voiceover sound that's not going to cost you much at all. Go out and just record something using what you've got and make it awesome. Hey everybody, thanks for watching today. Uh, if you enjoy this type of content, uh, let me know. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe. Uh, if you don't like this, give me a thumbs down and tell me why in the comments below. I'd love to hear uh, what kind of troubles and issues you're having in Ableton and how I can help you with that. Uh, you know, that was one of the biggest things for me is just someone coming alongside and showing me what I needed to learn to get better sound, better music, better voiceovers, things like that. So I'd love to hear from you. What other types of things do you want to see? And uh, I'll try and address those as I can. So appreciate you taking the time to watch. And uh, we'll see you next time.